yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. It's uh, really exciting. It's a huge win for 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 all of us. Um, you know, this is uh, one of the better teams in in the world that we just played against. But um, you know, we protected our home ground, and and you know the way we fought for each other uh, today on that field um, in a in a tough game, in a, in a really really tough game uh, for a lot of different factors. Uh, you know, it's amazing and, and it just goes to show um, how much of a family that this team is and how much we're willing to fight for each other to 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 reach our objectives. And and, and this win is something I think, um, you know, uh, down the line, we'll never forget. At the same time, it's right now, it's, 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 it's three points. It's what we came here to get. And now uh, we enjoy this tonight and, and we look forward to, to the next game and getting three points in that one. I wonder if you could address as a follow up, uh, Milan Borjan. Oh. <laughs> Milan, I mean, he's just come up huge for us time and time again. I, I, I have there, I have no words for for the performances that you know he he is has been putting out there for us, uh, making these huge huge saves for us in big big moments. And you know, this is a guy that loves this program so uh, it's amazing to see him doing this for us and uh, but we, we also we trust him we, we we expect that from him because we know how good he is and so we expect those saves and 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 we know you know going into games that he he's going to have to save us a, a couple of times maybe in, in, in games and um and he does it he's ready for the moment every time so i mean just amazing amazing to see the the performance that he put through for us today Thanks and congratulations, John. Thank you. Derek, go ahead with a question. Thank you. Hey, Jonathan, congratulations on the win. I just want to ask you about that first goal. And can you just maybe talk me through your part in it and, and how important was it to score that goal and how to kind of change the dynamics of the game with such an early goal? Yeah, I think uh, an early goal in these games is, is what sets the tone. And, and this is what we, we aim to do. This is what we aim to do as a team. We wanted to high press them. and. And, and we did. I, I thought we started the game really, really well. We high pressed them and we got them in a, in a situation where they had to pick the ball up at, at to a 50-50. And uh, Kamal did a great job of, of doing his job, winning the first ball and putting in an area where I can make up, you know, a touch on it or play on it. And I just tried to touch it and get it quickly to our forwards. And then, you know, our two star forwards did their thing. They combined and, and, and Kyle, you know, He's automatic. He's automatic, and, and he puts the ball in the net for us. And um, yeah, it was a great start. It's, it's what we needed. It's what we wanted, um, and it was exactly what what we needed in the game. Obviously, as the game went on, um, they they took a little bit of control, and they had most of the control for most of the game. But I'm just so proud of how the team defended today as a unit, and, and we didn't give much away. And, and uh, the, the the fight out there for each other is. It's just an amazing thing. Jonathan, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take one question from Neil Davidson, and then we'll bring in the next player. Thanks, uh, Richard. Uh, congratulations, John, and uh, congratulations on your 50th cap the other night. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm wondering, do you allow yourself now to look at the uh, round robin standings and do the maths about what's needed? Uh, no. No, we just we're looking forward to the next match and getting three points in that one as well. I, I think you know, no matter what happens, no matter what stage we're at, we want to finish. You know, we want to keep, we want to stay undefeated. Uh, we're undefeated right now. We're the only team that's undefeated, and um, we we take pride in that. And 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 so you know, this is just another three points. It's another, it's a, it's a big win, but it's another three points, and we look forward to the next game now to keep, keep keep being on the field, keep being hard to play against and keep winning uh, these games. We want to stay on top of, of, of this region. And what is, you, I saw you making a snow angel right near the end of the game there in celebration. <laughs> Could you describe all the feeling and that safe? Well, first of all, hi to everybody. Uh, I got a chance now to, to say happy birthday to my dad. First of all, it's his birthday today. So <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect uh, present for him, actually. About the game, just unbelievable. These guys don't know how to stop, man. This is uh, this team is something special. Uh, 
it's what uh, what we uh, what we uh, we've been fighting for, and uh, I mean we're we're one step close, you know, to to making the the history of of Canada, and uh, just like the energy that these guys bring to the field and uh, that that they brought today to the game, it's 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 unreal, it's unreal. I mean, defensively we played amazing, amazing. I mean, it's not just my safe; it's the whole whole team. Whole team, the whole team did just amazing job defending, and and, uh, and these two guys scored amazing goals, and that's that's about it. I mean, I don't know what to say. Really, it's too many emotions in me right now. Thirteen years with uh, with uh, with the program, well, thirteen years with the program. It's you know, it's been a long time. It's been a long time, and this is what we deserve. This is what Canada deserves. It's just unbelievable. Some, some unbelievable feeling. Thanks, man. No problem. Thank you, Chris Jones, followed by Joe Callahan, please. Congratulations, Milan. Um, amazing game, obviously. Can I ask what you said to the team in the center of the field when you were in that circle? It seemed like quite an emotional moment. Yeah, I just told them that the job is not done yet, that uh, we cannot celebrate yet. Uh, there's, uh, there's still uh, four games to play. Uh, we have a very hard game now in El Salvador, and uh, we need to get the job done. You know, we want to go undefeated uh, the the whole campaign. So we're not, you know, we're not relaxing or, or anything. We're we're just, you know, staying focused, and uh, we want to get our goal. You know, our dream. You know, to go to the World Cup. This is uh, this is just one, you know, one step closer, and uh, just to celebrate a little bit tonight. You know, with their families and everything, and then. From tomorrow, we gotta concentrate and uh, and go to the El Salvador and uh, and win another game. Thank you very much, yeah. Joe. Followed by Derek, please. Thanks, Milan. Um, <clears throat> these kind of shifts—they're just not supposed to happen so quickly. Like to to see a team kind of rise in a, in a confederation like this. It's you know you've mentioned that you've been with the program for thirteen years, but I just wonder: a, can you put your finger on what has changed so quickly? And and take a small step back, even on a night like tonight, and what that feels like. I can just say two words: John Herdman. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Derek. Please. Hey, Milan. Congratulations on the win. I just want to ask you about this team, kind of uniting the country. There's a lot of soccer fans here that for the longest time would cheer from wherever their, their, their family was from or wherever they were born. And, and then they come here and, and they didn't have a national team to really cheer for, but you guys now are making, you know, basically people cheer for you guys, as opposed to maybe cheer for Italy and, and Portugal and Chile and wherever some of us may come from. What's that like knowing that you guys, because the team is very diverse, but you guys are kind of bringing everyone together. And now they're all behind Canada. I can say my uh, my part. Uh, you all know that uh, I came when I was 13 years old. You know, Canada gave my friend, uh, my family, everything. You know, it, they they gave a better life. They gave uh, they gave uh, good schools, uh, everything. You know, so you know this is this is the way, my way, to return to Canada. You know, and uh, I I think same with all other guys. It's. Uh, you know we're 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 one country you know the canada is multicultural country you know and uh and we fight for the for what's given to us you know and and it's given uh, they canada gave us peace you know better schools better life better everything you know and this is the just the way of us to return it to canada you know just bringing them to the world cup after 30 something years it's uh you know it's something special and uh, when when somebody gives you that much uh, love and everything, you know, you you have to return it, you know. And uh, we're we're doing our best, you know, to to return that love to 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 this amazing country. Beautifully said, Milan. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil Davidson. Are you there? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, good, Charlie, and we'll, then we'll bring in the. coach thanks hey Milan Charlie, obviously just on mute. there we go can you hear me yeah thanks congratulations Milan uh, just as as you said a guy who's been around this program for a long time how have you seen this kind of rivalry with the United States sort of change especially in the last couple of years 
I mean, it's not just US. It's uh, it's it's against every country we play. Uh, we have to give our best uh, rivalry against US. It's something special, something different. You know, it's two countries. You know, uh, right beside each other. You know, and uh, it's like a big derby, like a Red Star and Partizan. You know, uh, I can say it like that. And uh, it's you know. Uh, Whenever we went to US, you know, they had 50, 60,000 people, you know, screaming at us and everything, you know, and we're tired of that, you know, not respecting us and everything. So, so whenever we play them, it's something special and uh, we give our all best, you know, just to, to make our country proud and uh, not, you know, humiliate, humiliate it before, you know, before it was like, you play US and uh, they're like, oh, we play Canada, it's easy, yeah, blah, 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 and this and that. But now when they come to us or we go there, they're scared. They're scared. Last four or five matches, they've been scared, you know, against us. Because we have an amazing team. And this is this team just don't give up anymore. This team is see, this is new Canada. This is new soccer Canada. And we, we're just gonna keep keep pushing and fighting for the new gen, uh, generations. And uh, uh you know, we change uh, we, we will change the football here in Canada. I think and taking over the team, the very first meeting was was clear that this team had to qualify for a World Cup. Um, one, it was, uh, you know, we said this team, this group of men would be the last group of men to earn that right. Uh, that was the first thing. And the second thing is, if we qualified, we knew we could change a football country forever. And that's that's what's drove us every day. It's what they hear from me every meeting that um, it's bigger than us. It's uh, it's way bigger than us. So that spirit you see, you know, we all want to get to Qatar. That's that's one thing. There's a lot of personal agendas that are in there as well. That's that's human nature. That's normal. But I, I genuinely believe that these these men know that they've got an opportunity to really leave a proper football legacy for this country moving forward. Thank you. Derek. Hey. Hey, John. Congratulations on that victory. Um, I just want to just a couple of thoughts on, on the match itself. Just the early goal. How did kind of that kind of change the dynamic? And and uh, just just a thought on, on being able to pull out this huge win. Well, I think coming into the game, it's been a it's been a rough couple of days. You know, we've lost uh, a couple of players and you know, without Davies, without Estacchio, without Hutchinson, and then you see, you know, McKenney, Aronson, Pulisic, uh, Musa, you know, guys that are in great form, Dest. You know, you start to look at it, and you've got to, you, you got to know that in a game like this, there's going to be two elements. It's going to be tactical, and it's going to be about team spirit. They're the two things, and the first goal was key. I mean, once. Once you score that first goal, you've you've got control now. You can take control of where you want to play the game and how you want to play the game. So we were able to adapt, you know, to allow them similar to in uh, when we played them in Nashville to allow them a bit more pitch control in areas and and to make sure that we were resilient. We've shown that we can do that. We've shown we can um, we can see games out and. You know our transitional threat. I think that's uh, it's a massive part of of the identity of this team, and we were able to rely on that at the end. Yeah. And just a quick follow up for me. I just want to ask you about the ability you your team has, regardless of who's playing in what spots. It looks like you're getting the most out of these guys when they come in, whatever however long their shift has to be. It just it seems like everyone is pulling in the same direction. Can you maybe just speak a little bit about the contributions? That everyone seems to be making regardless of you're able to put on the field yeah i mean when you look at it, it what, what was pretty amazing tonight for jonathan azari or mark anthony care um kamal miller you know ali johnston they haven't played minutes you know they're still in a pre-season you know that was us squad was a european team in full season and that's that's the reality. They knew they had to dig in and fight for each other. And they knew they had to to give that bit of extra. Um, so I was just really proud of them. I mean, that, that was a tough, tough test for them tonight. Really tough test. Uh, just given where they're at. Uh, the US are a tough test on any day. But, you know, given the realities of 
you know, the depth in our squad, but also just where these players were at. So, you know, watching Liam Fraser come in again, you know, <laughs> that lad just seems to be ready to go all the time. And he has a bit of a knack against the US as well. So that was nice. And, you know, Junior coming in and contributing with his quality. But, you know, let's talk about Johnny, Johnny David and Kyle Lahren. You know, you see that real quality and Tejon Buchanan, just the X factor that they bring. And then Stephen Vittori, Ali Johnson, Kamal Miller. You know, they were absolute rocks. And then Milan, like, he, he wasn't massively busy. He had to pull that one big save out, one big save, and he did it. That's that's what he can do. You know, he's uh, he's dialed in. When that when Milan Boyan's dialed in, uh, he, he can be one of the best, the best, best uh, around. When you've seen that form in Champions League in Europe. Thank you, Derek. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Laura Arm. Hey, John, um, I wonder if you could just talk me through what it was like getting off the bus uh, when you arrived here today. Oh, my goodness. I've seen nothing like it. It's, it's uh, Laura, it's everything we've dreamed of. Look, I'm a, a hardcore Newcastle fan. I'm just a, a football fan at heart. You know, I, I used to turn up to St. James's Park and used to love that walk in. That was the favourite part of the game. Sometimes the football match wasn't the best, but the walk-in was the best. The atmosphere from the fans. It's the first time I really felt like I'm living in a football country. It was amazing. You know, the flares were going off. It was like a, like a Liverpool arriving for a Champions League game. It was that that wild. And there's no exaggeration there. If you were in, in that mosh pit, it was pretty wild. You know, the bus couldn't even get through. I mean, that's it. This is what we've dreamed of. It's absolutely what we've dreamed of to get people excited and, you know, people who've always had to wear an Italian shirt or a, a Serbian shirt, <clears throat> a Greek shirt, they can put them down. That's that's what we want them to do and pull on their Canadian jersey now and be proud of us as a football country. And, you know, we were feeling that. And when the boys feel it, they, they just absorb it. It's, there's no doubt in the dressing room, they were buzzing absolutely buzzing so you know it's great to see the the football fans get behind us and you can just feel the the excitement from the fans at the end of the game as well strong please thank you joshua followed by hey john your players have been very complimentary of the changes that you've made since you came in in 2018 um one thing they've mentioned is your ability to help them kind of speak their beliefs into existence and just bring an incredibly positive attitude every single day. How do you do that? And what's the importance of that kind of self-belief in this team? I keep coming back to, you know, the, the team spirit. We work hard at that. We work hard on cultural elements. I've got a leadership group that I've put work in, you know, they, they look at the, uh, the challenges in each window. They look at, you know, how they have to circumvent those challenges with their leadership style. They are very clear what they contribute as leaders to this team. This work goes in. This isn't rock up and play football. This is this is a high performing group of guys that are, you know, high quality leaders. That's that's the starting point. You know, I'm I'm a conduit in that process, but those guys have really took on that leadership responsibility. And that's why they don't break. They 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 bind together. The tougher it gets, the I think the stronger they become. I think that's a, that's been a massive part of the philosophy. And once that trusts it, then the tactical excellence, you know, they they back our tactics, they back our strategies. And players, when they're 100% behind something, you know, you get an outcome. And then when you've got trust and the clarity of the tactical excellence, you get the, the chemistry. And that's what you're starting to see. Players are, are starting to, you know, mask each other's weaknesses and, you know, celebrate that others have got strengths and teams, you know, I've been in before, you, you've you sensed, you know, teams can't celebrate when someone's got strength. Uh, it's an ego thing. And I think, you know, we're at that point where there's real clarity in how we play our identity from game to game. And there's a real trust in that people will do what they say they'll do when they get on that field. And a leadership group that will not let the team break. Like it just seems like this team is having fun. And I know that's a real simple way to put it, but it just looks like they're enjoying themselves more than any other team in CONCACAF. Does that matter, having fun? 
Well, we're winning. <laughs> it's four games in a row, I think. Is it four now? I don't know. But um, yeah, it, you know, when you're winning, it's it's easy to enjoy your football. But we, we've had our tough times and we've had to come through them like any team. So they're they're enjoying the, the fruits of the labour, I think, they put in in the first two years. It took time to bring it together. And, and again, you know, we we have got a long way to go. I'm, I'm, we're not qualified yet. Uh, first thing we said when we brought the boys together at the end of the game is it's not done. Like it starts again tomorrow. We've got El Salvador. We're not there yet. Um, we need some more points <clears throat> and, and everything from the recovery to get ready to go into heat. You know, I won't let these boys off the hook. They'll, they'll get a little bit of time to enjoy the moment and then we're back at it. Um, and we've got to keep staying humble. It's let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We're not there yet. Four games to go and a few more points to, to put in the bag. Thanks, John. Peter, please. Thank you. Peter, followed by John Molinaro, please. Hi, John. Congratulations on the win. Um, kind of a specific question here, but you mentioned yesterday that you'll have to watch the the space in behind the flanks and and the inside channels given the circumstances tactical or otherwise um was tactically fouling the u.s as they transition something you trained or prepared for yeah i think i think you have to at this level i think the that transitional moment is just so critical and you know you, those those smart fouls is something we talk about it's it is an important part of our game and i think every team's game that pushes through but I, th I think you've got to look at, you know, Weston McKenney just showed what a level he can play at. Him and Musa have really um, created a, a new edge for this US team. You know, they were really dominant. And, you know, coming in at half time, there wasn't a, a tactical issue for me in terms of, you know, matching Greg's structures. It was more about the individual quality of Musa and and, and McKenney, who really came to play today, like, the, you know, watching McKenney on the sideline, you can see he's a top, top level player. So whenever we got pressure, he was able to eliminate it. And at half time, it was, a, you know, it was, it was about being more controlled, getting more zonal so that, you know, we always had another cover or support within five, 10 yards of, of McKenney. So whenever pressure went on, there was cover to him. And you've seen that with Richie, Ali, and Tejan, how they started managing him on the side of the pitch. We just we couldn't let him take control of the game again. So, yeah, we had to adapt a lot in that game. I mean, uh, that US midfield is is as good as I've seen in CONCACAF. That was, that was tough today. That was really tough. Thanks, John. Thank you. John Molinaro, please. Thanks, Richard. Hey, uh, John, congratulations on the win. Thanks, John. Uh, John, before this international window, Kyle Lahren and Jonathan David hadn't started together since match day one. I just wanted to get your evaluation of that partnership over the last two games and what you've seen from that duo and how, you know, how the partnership has worked in your eyes. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed watching it. I mean, we've we've adapted tactically uh, without uh, Stefan and Alfonso. And, you know, with Alfonso, we said like glass off empty, glass half full when you come into a window like this. When we heard Alfonso wasn't coming in, then the first thing we said, well, you know, this is going to give more time for Kyle and Johnny to play in more central areas and, and to work that partnership. And I just think in transition, John, you've seen it, they've been lethal. They've started to build that uh, understanding of and and predicting where they're going to be. I think you're starting to see that, that that reaction time close where they just know. They know where they're going to be um, as as they get on the half turn. So that that has definitely improved. And that, that's been one of the silver linings of missing some key <clears throat> players that would have normally played maximum minutes. Thanks, John. Safe travels. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael Chandler, please. Hey, John. Uh, decent result that. Um, so much of the narratives surrounding this program's uh, uh, connected to the past, things that you've not been involved with. Um, mathematically, you're almost sure of qualifying for the World Cup. Surely you have 
one eye on the future or is it impossible? Well, I'm just putting my fingers in my ears when you say that. I don't want to hear that at all. I know well, what you're saying then, mathematically, but look, until those points are in the bag, Michael, we, we are 100% and, I, and I'm not even allowing the players to talk about the table. We, we've just got to go into this again with the same sort of attitude. Start again. El Salvador's a cup final. The second we take our eye off that, and we start thinking about the maths, you know, I think that's that, that's the mentality that that's going to hurt us. Sorry to jump in there, but it's it's definitely a, something that's close to my um, to my philosophy going through these games. Sorry, keep going. My apologies. No, no, no. I was just I, I was just going to say, like, you know, so much of everything is focused on the past. Like, you know, first win in Honduras in 37 years, first victory over Mexico in 21 years. Are you sort of tired of this program being sort of connected to the past, all these things that happened before your tenure begun? Oh, that's a, it's a great point because one of the, the key things that, you know, the players know that I've implemented is the pioneering mindset. And, and that's what excited about taking this job on. You know, the, a lot of the success is built from a long time ago. And for this generation, there's a real opportunity to pioneer every game. I mean, whenever we come into camp, we, we always set some some clear records that we want to break, whether you're playing against, a, you know, a USVI or a Cayman Islands to break goal records. Um, we celebrate all of the records after every game, you know, the players in our team meeting. We usually have a good laugh and, you know, all the records go up and people have to make speeches. And that's what we've created. It's a big part of um, my philosophy that it's, uh, you know, be first, be first at what we can be first at and, you know, get the leaders to establish what are we pioneering every time we come into camp? Is there a record we can break? So we've, you know, we've, I think, brought another one tonight going four in a row. So this is, this is what we're, we talk about prior to games, you know, what we're getting after. And that, that to me is just the process. And when you say we're having fun and enjoying it, you know, everyone wants to, to get after things. They, they want to be first at things. So bringing that to light, it keeps them here in the present and keeps us on task. And yeah, we, we just don't get lost in the past or too far in the future. It's just, you know, how can we uh, really crush it from game to game?